The world is currently experiencing one of the largest outbreaks ever of avian influenza or bird flu and it has reached such a level that it's not restricted to just spreading among poultry anymore. Migratory birds and even penguins have been infected and are dying and mammals are infected too. This avian flu has spread to foxes, otters, seals, sea lions, minks and even bears. Since this spreads among animals and birds and not humans, it is not a pandemic but a panzootic. What is very rare is for the bird flu to jump to mammals but it looks like it has. It is even rarer for the bird flu to spread among mammals that is mammal to mammal transmission but this seems to have probably occurred in a mink farm. And as of now, it is extremely rare for it to spread to humans, but it looks like at least four humans have been infected and one died. Most likely, all of these animals and humans were infected by eating infected dead birds rather than the virus spreading from contact or among non-birds. But this is still concerning because if they have spread from mink to mink in a farm, say, the virus has evolved a mutation that makes it easier to transmit among mammals, increasing the foreseeable future risk to a multitude of species in the wild and in urban landscapes. What's more, this virus thrives in the cold. Infections start to taper as heat comes around as sunshine and heat disintegrate the viral structure. However, this doesn't seem to be happening anymore. Cases simply fall during summers and spike excessively during winters, now leading to a potentially deadly new normal. This bird flu is of the type H5N1 and we'll come to details of that later. This is called a highly pathogenic avian influenza or HPAI. This outbreak that's currently ongoing is the deadliest in a decade and it has caused egg prices in some parts of the world to soar. The first case of this outbreak was reported in Jan of 2022, just a year ago, and it has spread. It has killed hundreds of millions of birds already, especially poultry. It has also spread to almost every continent as it spreads via contact, feces, saliva, contaminated water, carcasses, the air, surface of objects and so on. And when wild birds that fly across large distances are infected, the disease will spread in that particular area. If you have been following the famous or rather now infamous Emmanuel the emu, this is what happened in their farm as well that led to all birds being culled and this viral emu violating that protocol. To prevent spread, bird owners especially in farms are asked to cull all their birds because the rate of death among poultry and domesticated fowl is as high as 100%. To prevent spread, bird owners are asked to wear gloves and mask when working with the birds and to wash their hands thoroughly before touching any part of their faces. Wild birds have always infected poultry, but it going the other way happens much less frequently. This time, the virus has jumped from poultry to migratory birds. This spikes the risk because migratory birds fly large distances and can carry the viruses to newer places and virgin territories. It seems that wild birds are spreading the virus more than domesticated fowl is. Poultry, like we saw, almost have a 100% mortality, whereas other birds such as ducks can be asymptomatic but still be infected in carrying the virus. All through Asia, Europe and the North and South Americas, hundreds of millions of birds have died or have been killed. But this extends to other animals as well. In Peru, over 500 sea lions and many wild birds have died, including pelicans and penguins. The virus hitting penguins is a major point of concern because all of the 18 or so species of penguins that we have are threatened to some level. Nearly half of these species are categorized as either being vulnerable or endangered. These birds are also found only in the southern hemisphere and they live in colonies made up of thousands of birds. If the virus can spread in a colony, it will decimate all of these penguins. 
And then there's mammals. In France, a cat had to be put down after contracting the virus. In the US, three grizzly bears were put down in a park because they tested positive. In Russia, about 2,500 endangered seals were infected and died. In UK, a fox has tested positive. In Spain, a mink farm got infected and minks died. A lot of experts think this could be through mink-to-mink -mink transmission, which means that the virus has adapted to becoming more efficient at mammal-to-mammal -mammal transmission, but this mink-to-mink -mink transmission is yet to be proven. All of these infections primarily were through consuming the raw meat of an infected bird. If it turns out that seals and sea lions and minks and cats instead could spread the virus to each other, we are in really big trouble. The risk with such a widespread disease is that the virus now has ample opportunities to develop a wide range of mutations and to become a public health issue for humans. Mammals like humans can be infected with a number of other influenza viruses simultaneously. When these viruses enter the bodies of mammals, multiple viruses can combine together or the same virus could undergo rapid mutation and then could make itself spread from humans to humans. Currently, this has not yet happened. But what is H5N1 in the first place? H5N1 was first isolated in China in 1996 and it has been intensely studied since then. Several, several countries from different parts of the world have seen outbreaks. H5N1 is the most well-known and well-understood avian influenza strain. So we have some information on how to keep it at bay among humans at least. We know that flu viruses mutate rapidly and that is why the human flu vaccine needs to be updated every year. If H5N1 were to spread to humans, our existing flu vaccines could be modified to protect against it. So we are not completely helpless. But the problem would be that once it spreads to humans and develops mutations capable of spreading among humans and other mammals, it could lead to an influenza pandemic. Even before COVID, many countries had been preparing for a pandemic within the next few years and all these public health authorities were preparing for a global influenza pandemic and not a coronavirus one. This is because the flu virus mutates so rapidly that it is more likely to spread among humans, or that was the reasoning. But this is avian influenza, and so what exactly is H5N1? What is the H and what is the N and what are these numbers? When we talk about avian influenza, we're typically talking about influenza A virus and not type B or type C. These are the three main types. Influenza A has its natural reservoir inside birds only for the most part. Influenza A has been impacting farm birds for at least two centuries. The very first time it was properly observed to be spreading among a large number of birds was in the 1870s. And with each passing decade, the incidence of avian flu is increasing in frequency, especially as the poultry population continues to grow. Before the 90s, the infections occurred in pockets around the world, killing farm birds in only a small area. But now, due to intensive factory farming practices with high density of birds, the virus spreads quite rapidly, immediately leading to the death of thousands of birds. There are many other strains, of course, and of these, only three subtypes circulate among humans. H1N1, which caused the Spanish flu, H1N2, which led to the Asian flu, and H3N2, which led to the Hong Kong flu. Others have infected humans, but they don't circulate in the human population. For example, there is H5N1 and H7N9, which caused an epidemic in China. There's H7N7, H1N2, which seems to have adapted to pigs. There's also H9N2, H7N2, H7N3, H5N2, H19N7, H5N8, and H10N3. All of these have infected humans. But what are these H's and N's? H stands for hemagglutinin and N for neuraminidase. These are two types of surface proteins present on the virus and the number alongside these two alphabets indicate how many types of H protein and how many types of N protein are present in a virus. 
There are totally 18 known types of H protein and 11 known types of N protein. So theoretically, there could be 198 different strains of avian influenza A virus. H5N1, the current bird flu, is quite deadly in humans with a mortality rate of 50%. It is mostly spread from contact with wild birds or from eating uncooked bird meat. Cooking has shown to decrease the virus's ability to infect as high heat kills the virus, but raw meat has spread the bird flu to animals like big cats, domestic cats, horses, lab mice, dogs, sea animals, and more. The virus, all subtypes, survive in contaminated meat, food, water, clothing, air, equipment, manure, on animals and surfaces. That's why we have other such flus like swine flu, horse flu, bat flu and so on, all of which are avian influenza viruses. Over the last 20 to 25 years, there have been less than 1000 cases of H5N1 specifically in humans and less than 500 deaths. The virus has infected a human in the continent of South America for the first time. Last month, a nine-year-old girl who was in contact with poultry was diagnosed with it in Ecuador. Before that, a 11-year-old boy in Haryana contracted it and died. If the virus continues to circulate for a while and infects other mammals, it is very plausible that it could cause a pandemic among humans in the future. Therefore, experts urge extreme caution when interacting with birds and animals, especially in the wild and with poultry. And meanwhile, authorities are stepping up the work on influenza vaccines.